It was a unique situation. I, I guess, you know, being at the right place at the right time is a large part of it. I, I think my predecessor, uh, Roy Hundorf, really set up a lot of this stuff that I get credit for during my administration. Uh, you know, we had a great team of people that put all this together. Uh, there's no doubt about that, and they deserve every bit of credit for it. But during the early years, <clears throat> at, as part of our chip process of learning how to buy stuff around the country, we also were able to meet through banking relationships and other relationships we had formed through this, people in the media side. And there was a unique provision in media in the early days which allowed minorities to buy radio and television stations and issue a tax certificate for those to the seller. Um, and through a process of, of getting to know people, um, there was a consolidation of the industry going on at the time uh, with the, the national industry, ABC, CBS, and all of those. There were mergers going on. And uh, in this case, Cap Cities uh, and ABC had merged, but under the FCC rules, you couldn't have overlapping licenses, so areas. So Cap Cities had a television station in New Haven, Connecticut that had zero basis in it. Uh, but it overlapped with ABC in New York, and ABC wasn't about to give up New York. So we were able to cut a deal. I mean, we had to go in and sort of change the rule to include native corporations as minorities for the purposes of these events, because we weren't at the time. So the Small Business Administration finally agreed to make us minorities, like all other minorities. Um, and it was <clears throat> that that got us to the point where we were able to apply this minority certificate to that license uh, in New Haven, Connecticut. So we got a tremendous discount on the price of that station to take it over by it. And that's what sort of started us into the broadcast business. Uh, that sort of generated us into radio. Uh, at that time, the, the uh, Marriott Brothers owned the largest string of radio stations across the country. Uh, we were able to use that tax certificate to buy down those radio stations, and we also bought uh, WSMV in, in uh, Nashville, uh, Tennessee, which was another TV station. So we had two fairly significant market TV stations and these radio stations like Cube in Seattle and all of those uh, as part of an acquisition, mainly because we were able to use this tax certificate we could issue to the seller. And of course, if they reinvested in, in broadcast within, I think it was 18 months, they really didn't have a tax, taxable uh, situation. That really launched us into the whole thing. And then uh, as we sold out of those things, we continued to stay involved with people in the business, and the spectrum allocation came along, or a spectrum sale, uh, and we helped write a lot of the rules to how that sale would take place and how you treated minorities' interests within the spectrum sale, and there were set-asides for minorities in that sale. So we went in and bid with everybody else. We weren't very successful because we had set a cap that we wouldn't go above in these markets that we were interested in. And there were a lot of other minorities out there that were bid bidding with partners and bidding up these um, pops, what they call pops. You know, New York City, for instance, had five million pops. That was of big interest to a lot of these big companies. So we really didn't get a lot out of that. I think we got Tulsa and Hawaii in that first round. But what had happened is over time, these other minorities failed. They couldn't come up with the capital to actually buy down the licenses, so those got taken back. And since we were a minority and we were in a position and we had the money, we could go in and buy up those licenses. So we ended up with a nationwide footprint, which was important to have a nationwide footprint. Uh, and we ended up calling it uh, VoiceStream. It was us and a group out of 
Seattle uh, Western Wireless that uh, did this this acquisition, and uh, that got Siri into a very serious uh, position nationwide where we had this footprint, but we also had a problem. We realized that there was a consolidation going on in the industry after we had gotten all these licenses, but we couldn't sell for five years. So by not being able to sell for five years, had we not been able to, we would have uh, ended up holding a stick out here with probably substantially less value than we had at the time. So we went back to Congress and got a, an amendment to allow us to sell down earlier because of what was happening in the industry. That, uh, that allowed us to sell into the open market and at that time both Docomo and uh, Deutsche Telekom were in a bidding contest for VoiceStream. Deutsche Telekom won out. They bought VoiceStream, which made Siri just about a billion dollars on its investment. I think we had 150 million invested at the time. And so the total asset was worth about a billion dollars to Siri. We had enough, which was a different story, NOLs left over to really offset that income. That allowed us to be able to do a distribution to the shareholders for up just at 50000 tax-free to them because we were able to offset the, that income with the NOLs. And when you think about it, I mean, the whole purpose of ANCSA was to try to enrich and enhance Alaska Natives. And I think Siri, uh, I, I think all, everybody's trying to do that in, in different forms. We just happened to hit a home run that got a substantial chunk of the equity to the shareholders in a tax-free form. We did give additional dividends. I think there was another 15000 after that uh, because we had excess capital. Uh, we distributed that. So they got a total of about $65,000, $70,000 in that one year uh, in dividends. And that was a great thing. I mean, that's what this whole thing was about is to try to get people under their own self-determination uh, track. Uh, but it was through a whole lot of team effort by a whole lot of people. You know, everybody says, God, what a great job I did. I said, I wish I could take credit for it all. <laughs> It'd be great. I mean, I happened to be at the helm uh, of Siri when it happened, and I feel good about that. I feel great about the team of people we had. And at the time, I feel great about the predecessor to me. I mean, if it wasn't for Roy Hundorf, I wouldn't have been there because Roy was the one that supported me all the way through uh, from the very beginning when I was a land manager when he took over as president. I mean, I've always, I always had Roy's support. Um, and people say, well, he came after you in later years. You know, that may be, but I still have a deep respect for what Roy did and, and uh, helped make the company what it is, and you can't take that away from him. I don't care what people say. Um, but again, having a team of people to be able to figure out unique things and sort of think outside of the box uh, and, and really work as a team, not some individual out trying to do his own thing, uh, really made the difference. Um, and, and that is what translates into to me, translates into equity to the shareholders. It's not about you as the manager. It's not about you as doing the deal. It's about what you can turn those deals into to get to the shareholder without really giving up the company. And uh, I think we were successful at that.